that's the locks at Audlem done. And now we're going out with these amazing views over the Weaver Valley. Well, here we are, in a peaceful spot just above the pair of locks at Hat Green. And that uh, is quite a cruise, so I think we'll call it a day and stop here until tomorrow. That's a sign to the Hack Green secret nuclear bunker. Not so secret now, they put that sign there, but apparently for 50 years it was a top secret. Uh, radar station and Cold War bunker in the event of nuclear attack. Now open to the public. We might see whether we can check it out later. But first, lunch. So let's go and see if we can find the location of the secret bunker. Oh, there's a sign. That might be helpful. I was certainly aware that some people were worried and um, there were things going on behind closed doors. This is a nuclear bomb. Pass! Wow. So this is where they would plot the destruction of the country whilst they sheltered in this nuclear bomb proof fallout shelter. This is the table where they plot each nuclear explosion. Second World War to the late 1960s. This is the sort of equipment that it would have had in it. We're now deep underground in the shelter itself. So now we're in the administrative corridors of the uh, hiding Cheshire Regional Government Unit should there have been a nuclear attack on this country. This is where Cheshire would have been administered from, or what was left of it. This is the environmental control room where they could generate clean air, heat, clean water for up to 160 people. This is the briefing room where the top people would decide what to do. And this is a BBC radio station which would be used to communicate to the population important information and facts. Communication centre, 1980s computer technology. And this is the British Telecom equipment room circa 1980-something. Look at that. Oh, 
And this was the backup, an old fashioned hardwired telephone exchange that would work even if all the electronics had failed. Here's the radio transmitter to transmit that important information to the general public. This is a ballistic missile early warning center so that they could detect incoming missiles and warn the population. It's scary how serious they were about the threat of nuclear attack. I was just at medical school enjoying my beer and learning how to be a doctor. Sends shivers down your spine really. My father was involved in the development of the very low frequency radio transmission system. It's such low frequency it penetrates water, so submarines didn't have to surface to pick up signals. So they would use this to signal the Trident nuclear fleet to launch a counter-attack. This equipment was actually used by Margaret Thatcher to signal HMS Conqueror to sink the Belgrano. That was quite chilling to think how prepared they were for a Russian nuclear attack within my lifetime. If you're ever in this area, this is well worth a visit. I need a beer. Let's get back to the boat. And Judith is taking the fallout uh, issue seriously with her cup of tea. Uh, as an ex-radiographer, of course, uh, she has knowledge of these sorts of things. Mm, lots of knowledge of tea. Morning. Well, it's a lovely day at Hack Green, but it's set to deteriorate with rain forecast. So we're going to crack on through those locks and hopefully get to Nantwich. Whether we go further depends on weather and whether we find Nantwich an interesting place. Apparently it's a very nice place. So let's see what happens, as always. So that's the Hack Green Locks done. And now let's see what uh, we find in Nantwich. through it, but nowhere to move longer than two days. So we need to go somewhere else to leave the boat. Another word about the Shropshire Union. This is in fact three canals constructed uh, throughout the whole of the Canal Age. In the 1770s the Chester Canal from the River Dee to Nantwich was built to broad gauge standards so that river boats could use it. That means that it's got broad locks um, and it's got broad bridges. Um, it was not a commercial success, uh, but its fortunes were rescued by the Ellesmere Canal, 
which is now known as the Frangothan Canal, which made the section from Chester to the Mersey profitable. In 1833, the branch from Middlewich, joining it to the Trent and Mersey, opened, which enabled clay to be taken to the potteries and crockery exported. And the canal from Nantwich to Orthley Junction received its Acts of Parliament in 1826, but was not completed until 1835. This is a young canal which explains its uh, dramatic cuttings and embankments and of course this canal was built by Telford. As seemed to happen in the early 20th century with the railways, these separate canals were merged in the mid-1840s to create the Shropshire Union Railways and Canal Company and that has formed the Shropshire Union as we know it today. But as we go through Nantwich, we move from Telford's relatively new, dead straight canal into the much older canal going to Chester and beyond, which is broad and more curvy. Well here we are just before Hurliston Junction, which is where the Langothlan Canal uh, joins the Shropshire Union. Um, on a two day mooring, all the moorings along this canal seem either to be spikes or two days which is ridiculous because there are a lot of them and we need to leave the boat for more than two days. So we're going to have a little look and see whether we can see any moorings that are more than two days around here. We shall see. Nantwich, lovely, but we couldn't moor there for more than two days. So we had to press on through. This guy was coming straight for us. How we can see? No idea. A sort of houseboat. So, here we are on a stormy evening at Hurliston Junction. Langothlan Canal's going up those locks, but we're not going that way. Next time, we're going to head towards our final destination, hopefully, of Ellesmere Port. Dreammaker's going to stay here for a few days just to the left of the 48 hour mooring site and about a foot from the bank thanks to the famous Shroppy Shelf. But she seems fairly secure and I'm sure she'll be happy. So until next time, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment and we really hope you'll come along with us next time. Until then, bye bye.